No more futzing around. No more putting it off. No more telling me it's not for you. This time, we're going to show you how to set up Ham Alert. Next on N1JUR Amateur Radio. Let's get you started. We're going to get you set up using the Ham Alert um, website. This is a great cloud app. So once you get it configured and get your account created and start creating filters, um, this tool is going to be uh, very easy to be able to spread and you know share that information to all of your other devices. Um, and uh, you know, you'll find uh, that a lot of uh, you know this stuff done on the, the web browser version is going to be so let's uh, head on over to Hamalert here. Um, I'm going to open up my browser. And uh, if you've never set up an account here, you're just going to click on register. And you're going to walk through some of the simple uh, details here. Uh, email address, your call sign. If you obviously aren't a valid uh, licensed amateur, you're going to want to do that first and get that out of the way um, and put your call sign in there. They don't do any database checking. Um, again, not a big deal. But, you know, make sure you use your call sign in that list, create a password, um, and then their uh, spam bot question. My uh, answer to that is uh, it is not QRO <laughs> either way. <laughs> so once you get your account registered, you're going to get an email in your inbox. You're going to click the link to verify and you're going to get logged in. So once you're logged in, you're going to be uh, presented pretty much with a clean dashboard here. And I want to make note that I've been building these alerts uh, already. Uh, in this video series. So if you um, are at this stage, you already have an account and you want to get involved and start creating alerts and learning how to do that, you can go check my video series out uh, in the link below. Uh, there's a playlist there and you can head over to my uh, channel and check out uh, there as well. So first thing I always recommend with everybody is head over to your account details and you just click up on your call sign here. Um, if you're a club log member, and I won't go into detail, those that are club log members are going to know what that is for and how it uh, works for them. You can put your username and password in there and get set up uh, within the software. So your ham alert is linked to that. One of the things I really like to do is I'm a lot about building the community and making sure people you know can reach out to me and get connected. I use a lot of their quick uh, HTML spots. If you uh, head over to my amateur radio website, n1jur.com, you'll see down here at the bottom, I've got a small little ham alert notification. And this is all real time. So as you're online or the spotters uh, networks pick you up, this stuff will be updated uh, in real time as to what frequency, band mode, that type of stuff uh, uh, you're uh, currently running. It's a great little way. You can integrate this into your own website if you have one or if you have a QRZ page, um, perfect uh, location for that too as well. Um, so once you get those uh, caught, uh, code copied in, if you want to do that, <clears throat> excuse me, you can change your password here if you want to. Um, but outside of that, that is the kind of simple basic stuff that you want to do on your account. So once you've done that, let's kind of describe some of the stuff from uh, you know up at the top of the page. We're going to first focus on uh, limits here. And this is one of the things that I know a lot of hams when they do get ham alert, don't go in and tweak. And I strongly suggest it's probably a good thing to do. Um, one, it's going to cut down on a lot of, you know, extra chatter and um, excessive notifications uh, when you do set up triggers. At the same time, it helps you kind of control the information. Uh, so you're not, your phone's not going off crazy if you happen to have the uh, app alert set up um, or SMS for that. Matter. So let's kind of just go some through the details here. Um, overall, I usually like to set my limits. Um, their default is 100 per every 60 minutes. I usually like to lower that because if, say, I'm hunting a Hoda entity for a specific um, group of parks uh, in a state area, you could have, especially during Support Your Parks Weekend, loads of notifications for a specific area. So I like to kind of throttle that a little bit um, just because uh, it just you know, makes it a little easier on my own device to be able to uh, go through and, uh, you know, test uh, and, you know, not get inundated. Uh, the per call sign, great. Um, another filter here. Um, I usually do three for every 15 minutes. <clears throat> and the reason why I do this is 
there are a lot of spots if you, especially when you set up your triggers you can select all of the sources meaning the soda watch pota uh feeds you can do uh the rbn and you know psk reporter and all of that type of stuff and so you might get duplicate alerts from those networks for that specific call sign so by limiting to three for every 15 minutes you'll probably get a little bit less but at the same time you're going to get um stuff that you can go back in your ham alert and look through um and be able to either react to if you're looking for or be able to find more detail on versus just seeing the same call you know 15 times uh over a, a 60 minute period or whatever be the case now the other two filters below that allow you to filter that down even more um so if you're doing um triggers where you're doing it by band or mode um or even by per call sign you can tweak those values um, to more your liking into what you can, you know, basically tolerate on any given day. Um, once you uh, have done that, just make sure you save it. So all of those settings are saved. And by default, um, these three last three filters are not checked on by default. So if you are setting this up and you expect them to be enabled when you first create your account, I know that you have to go in and tweak these yourself. Um, the treat soda watch spots separately. Uh, this is for a lot of the Soda folks um, because, you know, when you get posted on Soda Watch, their window is very small. Um, you want to make sure you're getting uh, most of those spots first. And then when you get them from, say, the RBN um, or other uh, feeds, because, you know, th they can be a little bit delayed um, and those systems have their own methods of, of getting information out to the masses. So. Once you click save, you're good. Uh, just wanted to point out one last thing on this page. The number of times exceeded is a really good kind of bull call watch trigger for me. Um, if you want to find out if any of these alerts or, you know, or these filters are working to your benefit, know that you can go to this page anytime um, and check that va the value there. And if it goes above zero, then you know that these filters have done their job and that they may be uh, cutting back uh, notifications from a trigger that you might have a, a wide berth set on. So know that, uh, you know, if you ever see these, uh, that little value of zero go up, uh, you can always head over to your triggers and kind of figure out which triggers causing uh, excessive notification. All right, that is limits. So let's head over to our next uh, item we want to tweak, and we're going to go with a destination. <sighs> Before we get into this, what I want you to do right now is if you haven't set up on your smartphone or your tablet, uh, the Hamalert app, uh, pause the video right here, head over to the website uh, or your app store, download the app, get it installed. I'll wait. All right, enough waiting. Once you get set up and logged in to Hamalert on your smartphone or tablet, um, you'll find that your devices will show up in this list. And as you add more devices, you'll see more and more um, devices in the device notification area. We're going to go into some of the details and some of the cool features that I love about HamAlert uh, in a second. But let's kind of just go through this page real quick. The HamAlert app, uh, you can enable push notifications. Highly recommend it. Um, I am not really a, a, a fan of SMS. I mean, yeah, it's available. If you don't have a smartphone, it's really kind of your only option. But if you do have a smartphone and you do run Hammer Alert on it, um, I would say enabling push notifications will give you um, a better experience, uh, both with the application and uh, with managing your you know, notifications and alerts and triggers. Um, and you can decide by device to turn one thing off versus the other, all from within the Hammer Alert app. Um, if you're a Threamer user, you'll know what you need to do to be able to set up your ID here. That's just more of a secure uh, business type uh, SMS tool. The SMS notification section, this is where you're going to have to do a little bit more um, legwork to get it set up um, because of the spam. Spam can act um, and SMS notifications and spammers. Um, this isn't as simple as just plugging your phone number and go. Um, you're going to need an API token. You're going to need a bunch of other components to make it all work. But if you're um, not a smartphone user and you have just a simple um, you know, text message uh, device, then um, this might be the method that you have uh, versus maybe getting a notification via email um, or, or uh, straight uh, through uh, three. If you, if, if you can get 
Prima set up, then I would say that's a better route to go. Um, both of those are going to have some technical steps to be able to get done. The last two pieces I won't cover in this uh, video because it's more of an advanced user function. Uh, if you're used to Telnets and uh, access uh, setups to um, logging applications that require, um, you know, the R attached to an RBN um, or, you know, Potasota's website, you can use the Telnet uh, component in Hamalert and be able to feed that into your um, logging application. Same goes if you want to be able to, um, you know, do some advanced uh, notifications and feeds uh, from, uh, you know, Hamalert, you can use a get in a post and then redirect that to say your discord or to your website or whatever. And so there are a number of different ways to be able to do that. Um, and, uh, those tools are available, uh, to you free. So once you've saved that, now we're going to dive into the fun part with Hamalert. You're going to now click into this formats tab. I highly recommend spending some time here because this is going to help you in the long run. Now, some of my other videos um, I have already you know, created in the playlist, uh, again, are tailored on how to use triggers, how to set them up for specific scenarios, as well as, um, you know, there'll be a couple more coming out about the triggers themselves. Um, so if you've never done any of that, you know, take a second or two to go over to those videos, check those out. Um, this is where you can kind of tailor those notifications. And so in Hamalert, you'll notice that there is um, a title that can come across uh, with every uh, alert setup. And again, this goes specifically for push notifications on your smart device. So whether it's Android or iOS, um, you'll get a smart alert pop up specifically for the Ham Alert app. Um, and I'll show you what those might look like. Uh, those alerts themselves, uh, you can title it however you want. The next piece that I really, really love about this is how you can tailor that message. Now you're not locked into whatever the vendor wants to send you, you have variables that you can throw in the trigger field. What I have here is my customized uh, notification uh, message, and I'll go over that a little bit with you. But what you want to do is there's a link here called variables, and you can pop up all of the variables that Hamel Alert has in its database when it sends notifications. And you can put any of these variables here located on the right, or sorry, on the left, um, into that variable list and it'll uh, put whatever that value is into uh, your notification, which is a phenomenal feature and functionality. And I'm super happy that Hamalert has this built in. So let's kind of go over my notification here. So my push notification, uh, the default by out of the box is usually spotted the call sign, the frequency, the mode, and then there is the spotter name. I usually get rid of the spotter name um, because for my purposes, receiving it on my smartphone, I really don't care who spotted them. It's not a, a, a big concern for me. Um, and it's really just, just extra characters that I don't need. But um, where I had created in my trigger videos, um, there is a field in Hamalert called trigger. And so let me just pop over there real quick if I'll look at a trigger myself. Um, so this one I have for Kyle Alpha Alpha Zero Z. Um, uh, you can go check out Kyle's channel if you're ever interested in his stuff. He does a lot of CW stuff, um, as well as many other things. Um, so I've got a trigger set up here. Again, this is just triggering off a bunch of sources. Um, ergo, the Soda Watch, RBN Cluster, PSK Reporter, and Poda, uh, all looking for his call sign with a uh, action notification that it sends uh, a notification to the app. Um, then there's this comments. This comments field is a free form field. You can put whatever you want in there. Um, in one of my videos, in my trigger video, you can learn how and what I usually fill in that field. But this comment field is important because as you start to build a lot of these triggers in Hamlet, you're gonna find that you're gonna forget why you're getting this random notification from a call sign you don't recall. Uh, maybe in a park, you can't remember what you set up for. So an example I have, and if Kyle was a, uh, you know, working in a specific uh, park reference area in, uh, you know, Ohio or whatever, and I wanted to make sure that I trapped him and that park in there, I could there in that description, preform text saying Alpha Alpha Zero Z Kyle Park, blah, 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 1234 in Ohio, um, POTA. And once I save that credentials or save that detail in there, when I go back to uh, my formats, 
this trigger comment will fill in whatever text value I have in that comments field. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, you know, once you start using triggers and you can see here that I have a long list of triggers for different, you know, hunters, uh, for different functions, for different parks, whatever. Um, you're going to find that you're going to forget what that trigger did or why you got that alert. And most of the time you're just going to get annoyed with it, especially if you get a lot of notifications for a specific, you know, reference or entity or you know, call sign or whatever. So having that comments field show up in your alert is going to save you um, a lot of time and headache trying to figure out what what notification, you know, you just got and where and, and what you need to do with it if you need to do anything with it. Um, so once you got all that set up and tweaked um, and you can save it, the format um, in ham alert now allows you to actually simulate. Now, so say I want to be able to test this, you know, do we make sure that, you know, my notifications working as expected? Uh, I can well, now go over to the simulate page and just by filling in all the criteria here, I can say um, I am going to be looking for, uh, let's put in uh, Mike uh n2 mak's call sign n2 mak here in the list and say he's on 7200 which you know is his favorite frequency um and he's working sideband and say i want to pick him up on poda i can then say i'm the spotter because you actually have to fill in a spotter name here and then i can say looking for a contact at poda park with mike and then i can hit send and if everything was filled in properly, you'll see that um, the sent page now shows um, a uh, successfully sent. And if I head over to my iPhone here, you'll see that I now have a simulated alert here in uh, the um, Ham Alert app. This would also pop up on my Ham Alerts uh, you know, dashboard or just in my general dashboard for notifications. And you'll see all the details as well as my uh, trigger uh, information um, listed there, um, you know, summaries um, of it. Now, again, this, this is great because now I can easily just look through this list and say, oh yeah, yeah, I don't need to worry about this call. I do need to worry about this notification and I can slide on over the, the, the radio or remote into my flex and, and try to see if I can make the contact with the person. So that is the three kind of key areas that I recommend that you get set up initially once you get uh, ham alert configured. Um, there are also a great group of information and help text and um, a, a forum that you can find more information about. Uh, you can always go over to their help uh, and their forums page is a great, um, like I said, reference to being able to learn a little bit more. Uh, you can also email me at n1jur.nh at email.com. Um, got uh, a question about a trigger or I want to learn more about how to tweak um, a specific uh, trigger to your benefit. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, hopefully uh, that quick uh, walkthrough of the Hamlet app uh, is going to get you going and uh, it's helped you to uh, learn more about uh, a great tool that's uh, created for the ham community. And maybe we'll get you on that ham alert train. You know, if you like this type of content, uh, make sure you like and subscribe and share. And always uh, feel free to comment down below. Let me know uh, if you uh, have any questions about that. And thanks again for watching and 7-3.